Our hearts age like we do. And there are times where it gets stricken by some type of heart disease. Problem is, there are also some times where the heart disease is so severe that the only solution for a cure is actually a heart transplant. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you seven surprising heart transplant facts that you need to kind of know about. <laughs> Come in right up. Hey y'all, Amen here, you're watching Heart Limits. So, I think you've noticed my outfit is pretty warm. I think it's starting to get chilly and the weather is really gloomy outside. So now, I could really say winter is coming. <laughs> so, let's jump right into this. Surprising heart transplant fact number one. Well, that, 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 that title feels so long and it feels like a jumble of words, but anyway. So heart trans, surprising heart transplant fact number one. So number one is all about selection. So with selection, it's important that you are sick enough to kind of need one and you also need to be healthy enough to receive one. And the reasoning behind this is because there isn't enough supply of hearts for the number of people who actually need a heart transplant. Number two is actually connected with number one. So of course you'd be asking, what is the source? You know, where do they get the hearts from? Well, the hearts are usually taken from people who are recently deceased or people who are brain dead. So most of the time, these are people who actually suffered some type of head trauma, you know, got hit on the head and then they were brought to the hospital. Or it could also be a person who suffered some type of gunshot wound and is on the brink of death. Or it's even possible that it could be a person who suffered some type of car accident. So normally those are the cases where they get. But of course, there's always this consent that needs to be given by the donor which is basically the person who's on death's door and the donor's family. So once they both consent, that's when there's finally a heart that's gonna be available. Number three is about temporary fixes. So as I said for the first and second, there is a process that needs to be taken for you to finally get that heart and you need to fit a certain category. So the third part is what are the possible temporary fixes that can be done? Well, there are two. One is VAD, so kind of like you become Darth Vader, you have some mechanical stuff. So VAD like Vader, that's kind of lame actually. <laughs> a VAD is a ventricular assist device. And what it technically is, is a mechanical pump that's implanted in your chest to help pump from the lower chambers of your heart to the rest of your body. So sometimes uh, some people are not eligible to have a heart transplant. The VAD actually serves as a long-term solution. But the problem is there are also times where a VAD is not as effective as one would hope it to be. So here you have another option for a temporary fix would be to have the artificial heart. It works almost as well as a real one, but the problem is it still is at the state where it's just temporary fix. Number four. So number four is about operation success. So in my mind, I used to think that given that it's a very, very big operation and it's a big procedure, I was expecting it to take a long time and also expecting that it would also have a survival rate which is really, really low. But little did I know that actually the whole process takes from 4 to 10 hours. So it's not that long actually. In my mind it was like maybe 24 hour process or even longer than that. And the survival rate I thought was probably what 50%? Well I'm wrong there again. <laughs> Apparently the survival rates is at 85 to 90 percent so that's pretty pretty high i have to say 
So I was thinking it would have been quite all right to be outside already since the sun is slowly coming out, but no, it's still pretty cold. So yeah, I'm back inside. <laughs> so surprising heart transplant fact number five. So number five is about heart denervation. So what heart denervation is during the process of a heart transplant, the nerves are cut off and they are not reconnected. Now, since the nerves are cut, almost all the responses to stressors are now transmitted through hormones, which is through the bloodstream. And because of that, there is a delay in your heart rate basically going up and your heart rate going down. So because of that, you should actually need to start warming up and cooling down whenever you plan or think of doing some extraordinary type of effort. Not necessarily extraordinary, I guess. I guess maybe when you start, you know, jogging, running, doing some type of sport, you really, really need to warm up. And the thing with heart denervation, not only does the process of transmission become slow, also, your heart rate is more elevated. It's because acetylcholine, acetyl, whatever that name is, which is released by the vagus nerve is actually now absent. And because this thing is absent, your heart rate is actually higher than normal. Normally, your heart rate would be around 70-ish to 80. For some, you can even go at 60. But when it's gone, your normal heart rate would be from 90 to 110. So that's quite a steep increase. And what I find really, really surprising with this nerve not being reconnected or being cut is that you actually won't have any sensation of a type of chest pain. Because after all, there are no nerves, so basically you kind of don't feel your heart. It's quite disturbing when you think about it that way. So number six is about the most common cause of death after a heart transplant. And there are two things. It is infection and rejection. And the interesting thing about it is that since you are technically putting a foreign object, which is another person's heart, in your body, the body identifies it as a foreign object and the body in itself will try to destroy it. So because of that, you need to take certain drugs such as immunosuppressants so that your immune system will not be as effective that it will not attack the foreign heart. But the problem of that, of course, is that now that your immune system is low, you are more receptive to infection. And because of that, you need to take another drug so that you don't become very responsive to infection. And also because of that, there's another chain of reaction. And in the end, there's quite a number of drugs that you need to take. Number seven, surprising heart transplant fact is that as of now, there is only technically one way to find out if our bodies are accepting a transplanted heart well, and that is through a cardiac biopsy. This is done with the use of a catheter, which has this interesting thing on the tip, which takes a piece of the apex of our right ventricle. And this device is called a bioptone and it actually starts with either two areas. Normally, they would start by getting it from the right side of your neck. So you insert it there, make it go through the veins and make it go all the way to the right side of the apex of your heart. Or if it's quite hard to do it there, people would actually try to do it from the groin all the way up, up, up and still leads toward the apex of the right ventricle. So once they get snippets or pieces of that heart from that area, they're going to put it under a microscope and see if those cells are dead or damaged. If ever they are, that means that they would either increase or change the type of immunosuppressants that a person is taking to make sure that the transplanted heart is being accepted better on the patient or patient is it still a patient 
the victim, whatever, on the person. <laughs> so, there you have, oh, that, that was quite, oh, interestingly difficult to do. So, there you have the seven surprising heart transplant facts. And I hope you found them rather quite surprising or rather interesting. <laughs> so once again, Amen here and you're watching Heart Limits. I hope you like this video. It's a little different take on certain topics. And I hope in some way you were surprised or something. Anyway, see ya. Bye.